every year, as we all know, you get seasonal influenza, seasonal flu, usually in the winter, uh, sometimes in December, usually in January, lasts for a few months. Uh, and I think all of us know this because as we all grow older, we get it. Seasonal flu is different, however, than swine flu. Swine flu is a new flu that emerged around April in the United States, around April of 2009, which is very unusual. Uh, it has occurred through the rest of the year. We usually don't see flu in the more temperate climate months or the summer months. So there's a big difference uh, between the two. Uh, you know, whether it's swine flu or seasonal flu, uh, it turns out, for example, that both of them, for most normal children look like it's the normal flu, whether you get swine flu or seasonal flu. The treatment is supportive for the most cases in, norm, most cases in normal children, uh, meaning plenty of fluids. Uh, uh, they don't have to eat if they don't want for a couple of days, but they need to drink. Fever control, uh, and by fever control, uh, you usually use uh, Tylenol, acetaminophen, or ibuprofen. We do not want to use aspirin. Not many people use aspirin anymore. Um, and obviously, if they show signs that they're worsening, fast breathing, bombing that doesn't want to stop, a change in their behavior activity level, a call to their practitioner may be warranted. Uh, but most of the time, uh, normal kids will get through flu without having to go to the doctor. One of the, one of the key tips is uh, trying to prevent it in others. If you're sick, you don't need to see other people or go to school. Um, and the government has been saying that you're okay to go back uh, from home, back to school, or back to work if you've been at least 24 hours without a fever from your flu. Um, so obviously if you know someone's ill, don't go in there. Um, you know, just good common sense, I think. Hand washing is very critical in preventing the flu. Uh, you know, making sure that you wash your hands uh, with many interactions. Uh, in people, if people are sneezing or coughing, the best way is to cough into your arm or into your elbow um, rather than your hands. Um, and if you're going to use a Kleenex, throw it away when you're done. Uh, but those are sort of general things I think that can help prevent it. Transmission of the flu. You know, not really. I think there are a few reasons for that. Is one, we'll overload the emergency rooms, um, and two, uh, if your child doesn't have flu and there's a large group of individuals, someone does have flu, the risk of transmission is even higher. I think that uh, there are perhaps some reasons to go to the emergency room uh, that I alluded to previously. If a young child uh, is having difficulty in breathing tugging into their chest, breathing rapidly, or color change, for example, gray color or blue color, obviously. If they're not eating at all, or if they're having vomiting uh, that's persistent, some kids can have that as well. Anything that uh, shows that they appear much more ill than your common flu, then that would be a reason to consider bringing them to the emergency room. Uh, we are trying to discourage, however, most people to bring their kids to the emergency department uh, unless they really have to eat. I think that uh, with both of those, it's important to, to get vaccinated. Um, you know, we know that there are recommendations for children for the normal seasonal vaccine. Annual immunization is recommended from age six months up to 24 years of age. Uh, that still is a recommendation for seasonal flu vaccine. There are other groups that need to be vaccinated with the seasonal influenza vaccine as well. Now, the swine flu uh, vaccine uh, is recommended for uh, kind of the same population, but we're targeting some other groups as well, including pregnant mothers, uh, healthcare workers, or people who work in emergency transport, uh, anyone who cares for an infant under the age of six months, the same for seasonal flu, you don't vaccinate under the age of six months. So if I'm a parent, I protect myself, then I can't give it to the baby. And then uh, uh, the, the group that we talked about, over the age of six months, uh, they're considered a high-risk group as well. Six to 24 months, they should get the flu vaccine. And then individuals above that age who have underlying risk factors like diabetes, chronic heart disease, chronic lung disease, or immune abnormalities should receive both the seasonal flu and the swine flu vaccine.